Sophie Tauber Arp was born in 1889 in Switzerland. She worked as a multidisciplinary artist, creating textile design, installation, sculpture, photography, stained glass, dance, costume design, and interior design. Her textile works have received the most attention. The color, line, proportion, are nothing short of extraordinary and clearly served as the basis for all her art practice. Unlike her contemporaries, she did not shy away from creating decorative art. She was interested in geometry and color alone, writing that the intrinsic decorative urge should not be eradicated. It is one of humankind's deep-rooted primordial urges. This project focuses on creating a tapestry in the style of Tauber art while exploring a different kind of weaving technique, the punch loop. Traditionally, a punch loop piece would be created using a tool like this. The basic anatomy of a punch tool is quite simple. There is a tube that funnels down into a hollow needle and out a hole on the back side. A piece of yarn would be threaded through. A variety of punch tools can be purchased, but for this project, we will be making one from a Bic pen and a large, blunt tapestry needle. But we'll get to the tool in a moment. First, we need to prepare our weaving surface. Royal Co. Paper Mesh provides the perfect base for this project. It is flexible and soft, much like burlap, but being made of absorbent white paper, it's easily paintable with watercolor. It's best to place a piece of scratch paper underneath when painting to catch any excess color that may escape through the open weave. Drawing from Sophie Tauber Arp's bold geometric designs and employing the grid created by the paper, paint a design. This will serve as a map when using the punch tool to weave. Now, let's make our punch tool. First, we have to take the pen apart. Pull or use pliers to take the nib and inkwell out and discard. Then, using the end of a long-handled brush, pop the end cap out. Alternatively, if the end cap will not pop out, but the plastic is soft, it can be cut with scissors. Now we're going to tape the end of a blunt tapestry needle to the end of the hollowed pen tube. Be sure the tape and the needle are nice and secure and that the eye of the needle is parallel to the tube. And you want about half an inch of space. And just like that, you have a punch needle tool. When the paper mesh has dried, which shouldn't take too long, maybe five to 10 minutes, about the time it takes to make the punch tool, secure it to the back of a pre-cut mat. Use tape on the full perimeter of the paper mesh sheet and burnish with the side of a pencil, a wooden tool, modeling tool, the pen cap. The mat is going to serve as an embroidery hoop, so it needs to be very secure. Select weaving materials that match the color of the painting as closely as possible. The materials can be different weights and textures from thin embroidery floss to chunky rug yarn and everything in between. If the yarn is too chunky to fit through the pin tube, like this pink rug yarn, it can usually be thinned by untwisting and pulling strands apart. I'm going to first thread my needle. Sometimes twisting the yarn on itself can help threading through the eye. Now, when weaving, the positioning of the needle is important to the functionality of the tool. Hold it in your dominant hand, gripping near the base of the tube with the taped needle side threaded 
outward and away from the tool for your first punch. Push all the way through and pull. Notice I'm pulling from the outside, from the needle side of the tool. Then pull tool out and tie a knot on the back side. At this point, the yarn will look like a single line coming out of the mesh surface. Punch the needle again next to the last punch. This time, do not pull the yarn, but simply grab it and then pull the tool out. You now have two loops, one on either side. Continue along the section. Sometimes it's helpful to rotate the piece while working. The length of the loop is dependent on how much slack there is in the yarn. For a tighter loop, only lift the needle up a little bit before pushing back down. I'll do a few here. For looser, shag-like loops, pull the tool further away from the paper mesh before punching. It is not necessary to use the opening directly next to the prior stitch. Spaces along the paper mesh can be skipped to create longer loop stitches. Additionally, try flipping the piece over to punch from the back side to vary your loop result. When a section is complete or when you run out of yarn, tie a knot on the back side. Now, the stitches are delicate before sealing. When using a punch tool, the yarn is threaded through a sort of continuing W wavelength pattern. You can see this when looking at the piece from the side. This means a whole section can be pulled out just by tugging on the wrong loop. To lock in the stitches, when complete, apply a generous layer of matte medium to the surface of a piece of matte board or chipboard. The mat, which had served as an embroidery hoop, is now the frame for displaying your tapestry. If you're looking to punch up your lesson plans, check out dickblick.com slash lesson plans for hundreds of free projects complete with instructional PDFs, material lists, and national standards.